Yeah, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Top 10 Tuesday video. I believe this is episode 37. And this week we are talking about our top 10 favorite uh, remakes of all time. Now I know remake, or the word remake in general just makes people kind of get a little bit on edge. Uh, you know, with that said, there's a lot of remakes out there that are quite shitty, I will admit. Um, but then again, there is quite a few remakes that are actually quite well done. I'm not a hater of remakes. I just, I find that there is a, a lot of remakes and just a lot of unnecessary remakes too, in my opinion. And You know, some of these films that are even in my top 10 are unnecessary, but they just turned out to be quite good. Um, but you know, with that said, you know, it's all personal taste and... Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of bad ones out there, man. Like Prom Night, The Fog, you know, and the list goes on. There's some really, really bad remakes out there. But without further ado, uh, let's get into the top 10. These are my top 10 personal favorite remakes of all time. Number 10 is the uh, 2009 remake of My Bloody Valentine. Uh, this one right here, you know, I've always had a lot of fun with it. Um, I know we recently, not recently, was it back in February, I guess, we did a... Uh, you know, My Bloody Valentine remake first original type thing show. And, you know, it's just, I still have a lot of fun with it. It's not a perfect film by any means, but it's just, it still has, you know, the main objective to it. And it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not really a big fan of the 3D gimmicks, so I've never actually seen this movie in 3D, so I can't really, you know, say if it was any good. But for me, it just doesn't really work all that well, but... I don't know. I've had a lot of fun with this one in the past, and I know I know I know this one's kind of hit and miss with a lot of people, but I really enjoyed though my bloody Valentine. Yeah, number ten. Number nine is of course the remake to my favorite film of all time, and that's Dawn of the Dead. Now Dawn of the Dead used to be one of my favorite remakes uh, for a long, long time, but this one right here is getting lower on my list, and I imagine we'll probably get bumped out eventually with some of the remakes that are coming out if they're good. I don't know. I really enjoy Dawn of the Dead, but it seems like every time I watch it nowadays, I just I don't care for it as much as I did from the previous watch. Uh, it's still a good, well-made film uh, by Jack uh, by Zack Schneider. Um, but you know, you know, it has its moments. It's it's still a really decent film. Um, but yeah, you know, of course, it can't top you know my favorite film of all time, which is Dawn of the Dead original. So, but yeah, with that said, it's a good film still. Number nine. Number eight is more of a remake in name, really. And that is Mother's Day, of course, from the, the classic 1980s, 1980 Mother's Day uh, film. Um, yeah, what can I say, man? This one right here is just, it's nasty. It's brutal. It's grimy. Good performances. Rebecca De, Rebecca De Mornay, she does a good job in this one. But man, this one's just... It's gritty, man. It's got some really nasty shit to it, and I really enjoy this film. It was nothing what I was expecting it to be when it first came out. Um, I didn't really know what to expect, but, you know, they took a different route with it. And, you know, like I said, it's kind of just a remake in name only, really. It doesn't really have a lot of uh, um, similarities to the first film, with the exception of a few things. But Mother's Day, I, I really enjoy this film. It's good. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's actually pretty good. And that was, of course, number seven. Uh, no, I'm lying. That was number eight. This is number seven. And that is uh, The Hills Have Eyes. Um, of course, uh, directed by Alexander Aja. Um, yeah, this movie, fuck, man. The first time I watched this thing, it actually blew my mind away. Um, <laughs> blew my mind away. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, this one really, really fucking surprised me how good it was. I was really surprised because I was, I'm a, still a really big fan of the original film. And I know this one right here seems to have a lot of people that like, like this one a lot more than the original. I can totally see why. Yeah, this is a gritty film. It's brutal and it kind of stays true to the original one, but just does it really well. I don't know, good performances in this, nasty fucking gore. It's just, uh, it's a brutal film, man. I, I really enjoy this, man. Good shit right here, so, yeah. The Hills Have Eyes. And of course, that is the unrated edition. And yeah, that was number seven. Sorry, I'm really, really tired. I just got off 12 hour shifts, so I'm trying to do this. Uh, number six is uh, Halloween. Now, I know a lot of people hate this film. And, you know, I understand, but at the same time, some of the arguments are really, really poor. Um, I won't lie. I get into it all the time with people. This 
about this film. I'm a really huge fan of the original Halloween. It's a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but I really like what Rob, Rob Zombie did with this film. I think he did a great job. I know a lot of people thought that the, the um, backstory is unnecessary, but I really enjoy the first half of this film. I think it's kind of interesting to see that backstory. Um, I do agree it's not necessary, but it's interesting to see it also. Um, yeah, I, I, I just really enjoy this. I think he did a lot of really good camera work on this film too. There's some really good shots in this film also. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just grab this edition and grab the one out of the Halloween box set because, well, it's two in the morning and I'm fucking lazy, so I'm not pulling that thing out. <laughs> so here's like an older edition of it, but yeah, Halloween, I dig it. I don't really care what anyone says. I mean, everyone has their own opinions, but I, I find it really fun. Number five is the 1978 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now this film just keeps getting remade and remade and remade. It's insane. There's a newer version. Um, this one right here is probably the first one on my list that I find superior to the original. Uh, I like this one more than the 50s one. Even though the 50s one's really good, this one right here just is gritty and it's awesome. Donald Sutherland, fucking fantastic. Jeff Goldblum's in this film. Um, which he'll be making another appearance somewhere on my list. Uh, but yeah, everyone knows the Invasion of the Body Snatchers story. It's just, oh, it's awesome. Such a great film. This is one I need to upgrade to Blu-ray, I just realized. But yeah, great film. <clears throat> everyone should see that if they haven't seen it already. <clears throat> that was number five. Number four is the remake of Maniac. Uh, this movie, man, I did not know what the fuck to expect when it first got announced. I was like, are you kidding me? Elijah Wood is playing fucking... Oh, I was like, you've got to be kidding me, man. Um, but, you know, it's just... I mean, going from Joe Spinell to you know, Elijah Wood, it's just... I'm trying to picture this and how this is going to work, and it just didn't wasn't working for me at all. Uh, everybody knows that Maniac is my favorite slasher film of all time, so I had really kind of low hopes going into this one. I didn't really know what to expect. They did everything prop like right in this film, like the POA, the music. Uh, Elijah Wood did a good job. The gore was good. The setting, I thought the acting was fantastic. Um, really good cinematography. Like it was just one of those films. Like they everything came together so well that kind of blew my socks off a little bit. So you know, I just oh man, I don't know. Just that whole Frank Zito thing. I just I couldn't believe that he was going to be playing. I, d I just, still to this day, I still have a hard time believing that Elijah Wood played this role, but um, yeah, it's a great film. You know, it was my favorite film of a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I love Maniac, the original film. That one's good. Number four, and that was number four. Number three is David Cronenberg's The Fly. Uh, yeah, what can I say about The Fly? It's just absolutely amazing. Another film on this list I... Um, I think it's superior to the original. So yeah, this is an invasion. Um, but yeah, the fly, man, just, oh, it's so awesome effects wise, man. This was, the 80s had some of the best remakes in it. Uh, but yeah, everyone knows about the fly. It's just, it's an amazing film. Um, David Cronenberg needs to start doing horror films again. Really does. Uh, that was number three, of course. Number two is The Thing. Um, this is, I consider this to be one of the best horror films ever made. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think it really is. It's just an all-time perfect film. Uh, it captures everything so well. Great effects, atmosphere, um, just, you know, the whole setting, atmosphere, the acting. Everything in this film is, is so great. And um, it's just so brutal at the same time. Uh, I mean, you know, just being in that that secluded stationary setting it's just oh i couldn't imagine being out there but uh the thing it's just so amazing um you know i go back and forth with my number one and two picks all the time but i always stick with my number one because i do watch it more than the thing for some odd reason but i still think that the thing is actually a better film um but yeah if that makes any sense to anybody out there and of course number one is the blob um yeah, I love this movie, man. I grew up with this thing. I watched it so many fucking times growing up. I just love it. Kevin Dillon's plumage and his mullet is just fantastic. But it's the effects and it's just the... There's so many memorable scenes. I, I always love the scene where the dude is making drinks for his girlfriend. And he's got the whole bar in the trunk of his vehicle. I fucking love that, man. It's so cool. Ever since I was a kid, I was like, I really want to do that. Um, and then grow a mullet like Kevin Dillon's, but... 
No, but uh, yeah, the Blob, to me, it's just a super, super fun, awesome remake, man. It's just, and I find it again superior. So there's like four movies on this list I find superior to the originals. The Blob, The Thing, The Fly, and Invasion. Yeah. So yeah, The Blob, and number one, what can I say? It's just, it's so fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, so recap, number 10, My Bloody Valentine. Dawn of the Dead, Mother's Day, The Hills Have Eyes, Halloween, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Maniac, The Fly, The Thing, and The Blob. Um, I know I've done this list in the past, but I wanted to see how it was going to work out this time. And I know there are some films that were on my list way back in the day that have that are not on there anymore because, you know, Maniac hadn't come out. and um, I don't think Mother's Day was on there. I don't even remember, but I know it's changed up. I know Texas Chainsaw Massacre got bumped off this, so... But yeah, anyways guys, that's going to do it for my top 10 remakes of all time. Make sure to sub all the other cats that I do this series with. And on that note, big shout out to the horror file. Um, new guy from uh, Body Bags. Filling guy right now, he's doing the top 10 Tuesday. So I'll leave the link down below. Make sure you go over and check out his channel and make sure to give him a sub too. Really, really super awesome guy. Probably going to be making some appearances on the podcast coming up next season. So be on the lookout for that. There is a mini shots up on the website right now if you want to check that out. It's just him and Double Shot J um, doing their thing. And um, yeah, so that's going to do it for episode 37. See you guys next week for another Top 10 Tuesday. Peace.